What's up guys, welcome back to another Mad Detail. Um, today we're working on a 1986 4x4 short bed GMC that is in desperate need of a detail. Um, as you guys can tell from the oxidized paint, um, this thing is basically pink instead of red. So sitting for about two or three years from what I got and um, hasn't been polished in a really long time. Tons of paint chips that we'll take care of later. I'm gonna redo the bed liner and then tons of other stuff of complete inside and out detail. So just before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure and turn your guys' notification bell on so you don't miss out on any future videos because I do have some cool barn finds coming out. Um, but moving on to the underbody of the truck, we have a really greasy underbody, which we'll do a full undercarriage wash on this one. Then moving on to the interior, tons of dirt, dust, and debris all over. Um, probably hasn't been detailed in quite some time. And does really make for some really nice results on that red interior and this red paint so make sure you guys stick around for the whole video and without further ado let's get right into it So to start off the detail, I'm going to start by soaking the engine bay with some full strength degreaser that's full concentrate, non-diluted to break down some of that grease and grime, especially around the valve cover area and the front of the block. It had a ton of grease um, from previous leaks. So I'm just going to dwell for a little bit and then come back with the pressure washer. And I'm going to do it as many times as needed. I think on this wash, I ended up doing it about three times. I didn't really show every step of the engine bay because... Um, I had to put my tripod all the way up and then I was getting oversprayed really bad from hitting some of the hoses and kind of water splashing back. So um, I did that about two or three times and it did come out really, really nice as you guys see in some later clips. Then also the same uh, process for the undercarriage, uh, full strength degreaser, let it dwell for a little bit, power wash it away, and then do it as many times as needed. And then I'll come back with a full acid wash to get any surface rust and brighten up some of the aluminum underneath.
So on all the painted surfaces, I'm going to be using some degreaser, diluted about 5 to 1, uh, just to loosen up any uh, tree sap and any kind of moss. Um, you can't really tell, but there is some moss built up and algae on some of the painted surfaces. You really can't see it, but there is it's present. So I'm going to soak it down with that and then pressure wash it away before washing it.
So moving on to paint polishing, um, here I'm going to be using some C4 clear cut correction compound by Chemical Guys for this detail. Uh, I've been kind of playing around with this compound and I really like it. It's very good for oxidized paint. Um, it has a very long working time and no dust. So I really enjoy using this one. Um, but as you guys can see, I got a lot of shine just for the first cut. And then I went back with some polish and kind of just played around with it. Um, I ended up using various different techniques. I went through microfiber to some uh, open pore uh, foam pads for this. And they all worked, seemed to work pretty well. The best combo I got was using a two-step polish. So a microfiber uh, pad on the paint and then a polish with a yellow pad. And I got some pretty good results as you guys see later in the video. So the method I'm doing here is a quick mow down with the microfiber pad and then blowing it out and then re-returning to it with some polish and I was getting a pretty good result in about the fastest possible. But compressed air is your best friend when you're dealing with these old oxidized paints. You want to frequently blow out your pad as much as possible. I mean there's really pretty much every half a panel or every panel you would you might get away with but most of the time when it's paint like this and there's just so much coming off it was for me about every half panel I had to blow out the pad. And uh, it did provide a really good result though.
So after getting the seat pulled, I'm going to be going around this with a very thorough vacuum. Here I'm using my Tonador Z240 and I'm just going to vacuum all the deep debris and sand that was in this carpet. And as you guys will see, just with a vacuum, this carpet almost came back to life. Um, it was about 80% clean after just a good vacuum. So never underestimate a good thorough vacuum, especially with the Tornador vacuum. It does an amazing job. So to clean all the interior, I'm going to be using some super degreaser diluted about 10 to 1 along with my McCulloch steamer and a variety of brushes. So as I just wanted to mention something real quick, whenever you're using a steamer on old interiors or new interiors, but especially the old ones, you want to be very quick with it and don't stay in one spot too long because it can discolor really easily and that's exactly what I want to avoid with this. So just keep that in mind anytime you use a steamer.
So since a lot of these old school trucks have a lot of painted panels inside, I thought it'd be a good idea to polish them all out. So here I'm going to pretty much polish every painted panel on this truck. Uh, I ended up doing a one step because I got pretty good results and I wasn't going for perfection. Um, just wanted to bring some shine back to it and it did make the interior pop as you guys see at the end. So to get the carpets clean, I'm going to be using some chemical guys, uh, carpet solution diluted about 15 to one in my chemical sprayer. I'm just going to agitate it with a drill brush and then get it all extracted.
So since the gear shift was so pitted, I tried using a fine stove wool, but it just wouldn't remove the rust. So I went ahead and took a scuff pad. It's kind of scratched up a bit, but it looked better in rust. Um, did that and then took some Eagle One, Neverdull, and went over all the chrome surfaces on the interior and then polished them all the way. And it made a really big difference as you guys see. And as for the body, I'm going to be doing the same thing. Just polish out all the chrome with some mag. I think I used some Mother's uh, mag and aluminum polish on the grill and bumpers. And then all the fender trim as well. Now, something you guys may notice on the truck, um, it did have some stickers. And then what looked like stickers, but was just a white spot. And that was from someone removing the stickers before. Um, it took paint with it. So what I did was I had some touch-up mix-up. Um, I thought I recorded most of it, but I didn't. So I went ahead and just mixed up some touch-up paint at my... Uh, paint store near me and took a um, paintbrush and just kind of brushed in all the spots and then buffed them out. Um, not sure why I didn't record all of it and then I thought I recorded the majority of it and I didn't. Uh, my SD card was actually full. Didn't pay attention. Kind of my fault. Um, but anyway, uh, so as you guys will see in the after clips, um, all the paint spots are gone or not gone but almost, almost gone. You could still kind of see them a little bit but it made the truck look a hundred times better. And then also, uh, the truck was gone for a day or two with the new bed liner. I didn't do that myself. Um, someone near me uh, sprayed in the bed liner and did a really good job. Um, and then you guys will see in the after results. Figured just in case you guys are wondering, you'll know what happened and kind of how the bed liner got in and how the paint kind of got touched up. So. So just before jumping into the uh, before and after results at the end of the video, I want to show you guys a little um, preview of some tools that I got recently from Ryobi. Um, and that is their full new lineup of automotive tools, um, as you guys can see here. So this is not a paid sponsorship. Uh, Ryobi contacted me, asked me if I want to try out some of their new tools and because I already use some Ryobi tools. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll check them out. And I really enjoyed all of them. And I think they're all a really good deal at their price point. Otherwise, I went to them on my YouTube channel. But here I have some of their power ratchets. Um, that what I really liked about the power ratchets was like the swivel heads like I'm showing here and then they had some really strong um, impacts um, some cordless drills cordless polishers um, uh, cordless saws I tried out literally almost every one of their tools so far and I loved every single one of them especially for the price point I'm here even like their little compressor they have here is awesome on the go it has like a little air pump if you want to pump up like an air mattress or a ball or even uh, your tire and then as far as like the uh, impact settings had some pretty cool setups like they had uh, full impact mode and then you could also lighten the settings for you know lighter use. Um, so if you guys want to check out some of these tools there will be links to them all in my description down below.
Uh, two of my favorite tools was the cordless DA polisher, which I thought was pretty cool. A few people were um, asking about it, so I went ahead and tried it out, and I thought it was pretty nice. And then uh, very lightweight, very easy to use, and then very user-friendly. And then also the cordless vacuum I thought was awesome, um, especially when you're on the go. So if you guys want to check this out, like I said, links to them all down in my description.
So as we're about to approach the end of the video, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And smash that like button um, if you guys enjoyed the video, of course. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next one.